stored data in rows, columns, and tables, Neo4j has a completely flexible structure. Most importantly, Neo4j saves the relationships that connect your data. With Neo4j, each data record, or node, contains direct pointers to all the nodes that it's connected to. For example, if Bob is friends with Jane, that Bob node points directly to Jane through a stored relationship. This network of nodes connected by relationships is known as a graph. Most other databases, even more recent NoSQL types, don't save relationship data directly. They can figure out connections, of course, but they usually do this by searching through a separate data structure called an index. This lookup process, which has to be done repeatedly to find each connection, is an expensive extra step that makes these databases inherently slower than Neo4j for relationship-intensive queries. Neo4j avoids these index lookups because its native storage layer is a connected graph. That's why we call Neo4j a native graph database. Over the past decade, Neo4j has made graph databases a key technology powering modern applications for hundreds of Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, and NGOs. Neo4j is used to detect fraud, enhance artificial intelligence, manage supply chains, unify data silos, and much more. Visit neo4j.com to learn more, or take a guided tour of a graph database use case in the free Neo4j sandbox. Neo4j, the number one database for connected data. Hello everybody and welcome to the first in a series of videos about graph data science. In this video we're going to introduce graph data science and compare and contrast it with traditional data science approaches. Uh, so it helps to start off with defining what data science actually is. So there are lots of different uh, definitions that we can use, but for the purpose of this video we're going to be working on the uh, definition that data scientists are using data to try and answer some questions or explain some outcomes. And there could be lots of different ways that they could do this. There's no specific one way that's the correct way. So perhaps we're loading data into pandas and doing some descriptive statistics. Uh, or equally, we could be doing some sort of visualization approach by loading the data into a tool like matplotlib perhaps. Uh, or equally, we could be building a machine learning model using scikit-learn. Uh, now graph data science is similar, um, but instead of using just data and often flat or tabular data, uh, we're going to use relationships to try and answer questions. And again, it's a Similar to data science, we've got a toolbox uh, of approaches that we can use, and they could be uh, using something like graph visualization, where we're taking data in a graph and trying to look at it and visually inspect it and see if we can find something out that way. Uh, or maybe we're doing some exploration of the data by writing a graph query, or we could even be feeding the result of that graph, graph query into a machine learning model as an engineered feature. Uh, um, or finally, we could be using a graph algorithms approach if we want to find out something across the whole graph. Um, and then again, we could just use that as part of an analytics approach, or we could feed that in as a feature as well. Uh, and so generally, graph analytics approaches fit across this spectrum of local uh, pattern-based approaches to global computation approaches. Uh, with the local one, we know what we're looking for, and we're trying to make some sort of decision, but we need the query to help us work out what that decision should be. And so we might be working on a, a, a very narrow part of the graph. Whereas over to the right hand side where we've got the graph algorithms approach, we maybe don't know what we're looking for, but we're trying to understand the, the overall structure of the network, like tell me what clusters are in there or what, who are the important nodes in this graph. Um, and we're sort of doing more of a global analysis. Uh, and so that's the end of our introduction, introduction to graph data science. In the next video, we're gonna learn about the applications of graph data science. The world's leading graph database raises the bar with Neo4j version 4.0 featuring unrivaled advancements in scalability, security, and agility. Built on Neo4j's native graph foundation, 4.0 brings unlimited scalability through sharding and federation, granular security controls for increased security and privacy, fully reactive architecture for more responsive and resilient applications, and with the new multi-database feature, the ability to run multiple databases inside the same Neo4j instance or cluster. Neo4j, built by developers for developers. Learn more at neo4j.com slash what's new. There are many types of databases today. The tried and tested relational database, the new and popular document DB, and many others and all of these have their strengths. But one place they all fall short is in handling complex connections between your data. 
Sure, any database may be able to return friend of a friend queries of three or four degrees, but what if you need 20 degrees and need it quickly? That's where Neo4j comes in. Unlike other databases, Neo4j Graph Database doesn't need to compute the relationships between your data at query time. The connections are already there, stored right in the database. Because of this, queries of deeply connected data are orders of magnitude faster. We get used to the limitations of the tools we work with. Neo4j blows those limits wide open, enabling queries never before imagined at speeds never thought possible. That's why Neo4j has become a key technology driving business critical applications for hundreds of Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, and NGOs. Learn more at neo4j.com. Your machine learning models are working. You're seeing results, but you know there's more for you to uncover. What if you could use the network structure within your data without disrupting your machine learning pipeline? With graph data science, you can. Here's how it works. You load your data into the Neo4j graph database, which reveals the connections in your data. Then you ask questions using graph queries and uncover hidden patterns in your data using graph algorithms. For example, similarity and community detection algorithms examine the network structures in your data to uncover tightly knit communities, such as fraud rings. Then you can use graph feature engineering to extract predictive elements to augment your machine learning models. Now you have the power to make better predictions from existing data. To learn more about graph data science, visit neo4j.com. Neo4j is the number one database for connected data, built from the ground up to leverage not only data, but also data relationships. Neo4j is a native graph database, which makes it critically different from other data stores. But what does native even mean? Neo4j is designed around a simple yet powerful optimization. Each data record or node contains direct pointers to all the nodes that it's connected to. These direct pointers are called relationships. All the information needed to find the next node in a sequence is available in the node itself. The native storage layer is a connected graph. That's what native means. Because of this principle, Neo4j doesn't need to compute the relationships between your data at query time. The connections are already there, stored right in the database. Because of this, queries of densely connected data are orders of magnitude faster. Other databases don't save direct pointers between records. They need to compute connections by searching through a separate data structure called an index. This lookup process, which has to be done repeatedly to find each connection, is extremely expensive and gets exponentially slower as the data size and query complexity grows. This makes them inherently slower than Neo4j for relationship-intensive queries. Over the past decade, Neo4j has made graph databases a key technology powering modern applications for hundreds of Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, and NGOs. Neo4j is used to detect fraud, enhance artificial intelligence, manage supply chains, gain a 360-degree view of data, and much more. Learn more at neo4j.com. In this video, I am going to show you how to begin using the Arrows tool for your graph data modeling work. We go to the acpjones.com Arrows site to begin our work. This is the current user interface for Arrows. Here we see a node that has already been created for us. We double click the existing node and add a caption to it of person. This represents a node label in a Neo4j property graph model. Then, we double-click this node again and add the properties name and birth year with values.
Hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Good Hi. to see you all. Hi. Good to see you all. Good yes. To see you all. Yes. Welcome to Summer, Welcome of, to Notes. Summer of Notes. Final week. Final week. Sad, 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 sad times. times but but every good thing has to come to an end, I guess. So, also so summer, also of summer of Notes. Yeah, and actually, uh, school holidays are over here. So we had today the first day of school. Again. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Kids. Kids went to school only for two hours or so, but uh, so <laughs> I also was in the school today At talking got, to one got. of the uh, computer science teachers about doing our weekly uh, girls coding club, uh, which I'm really excited about. Cool. cool. So, yeah, and we even did Neva J already there. With, with oh, really? The, oh, really? Yeah, with the six to eight graders, and they had a lot of fun. Uh, oh, that's, doing cool. That. that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, good fun, even with the kids already. <laughs> Cool. And actually, it was raining all day yesterday and most of the night. And now the sun came out and I even had to set up a sunscreen uh, so that you can actually see me. <laughs> and probably, and probably, actually, it's probably really nice that you're now looking at fountains and water supply. So I hope you all got your water uh, yeah. Yeah. Hydrate, free hydrate. selves. And we are going to look at some uh, fountains in Central Park. Exactly. So should we actually pull up uh, like a Google search for the fountains in Central Park? We didn't do that last time, right? I don't, uh, I don't think I don't, we did. I, I mean, did. I mean, maybe you can maybe you can look, can, look for that. I'll, I'll quickly, quickly get us going, get us going, going, going here. Yeah. So one thing, thing before, before, before we start, before we start really, really is, is I want to say that Lou is, uh, is uh, been, always been, you know, the, no, the heart of the heart this exercise the last few weeks. Can't cannot join today because she goes on a well-deserved holiday. So I think, I hope, at least that's what I said to her. I hope a summer of notes summer of notes completely wear her out and she now had to take off. Yeah. Uh, but she invested uh, a lot of time and energy it, it and love into some of notes. Yes, That's yes. something we definitely have to appreciate uh, as such. Absolutely, because absolutely. She, yeah. Without her, it wouldn't have happened this it, it, way. It, it, and no, she no. Yeah. really graded all these amazing uh, exercises and challenges and solutions. And so thank you, Lou, thank on you, your well earned vacation. All right. All right. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we, let's, shall we let's, let's kick it off. Let's right. Kick it off, right? Yep. Um, um, so summer of so notes. Summer of notes. Uh, uh, staycation, uh, staycation edition. edition uh, uh, final week. Final week. So, so uh, again, we had four weeks of challenges. Every week was every different. Week was every week had a different, different, set, of different set of challenges. Two, two different sets. Two different sets. Uh, one, for uh, one for beginners and one for experienced users so alike. So we always so try to make uh, something for uh, different skill levels, skill levels and, and have, different, have different, different skill sets, different skill sets um, 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 that can do the that challenges, do the but, challenges also but also have different challenges across weeks. four weeks. So we started, if you remember, back in the barbecue challenge, where the beginners had to model their first graph. Um, then we went on we to, went on uh, to uh, an art hunting, hunting challenge in the Metropolitan, in the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Museum. Museum. Then we had a murder, had a murder mystery, mystery last, last week, week where we had to find a murder and the accomplice. Yeah. accomplice. Uh, I think that, got, uh, I think that, got, uh, that was a, that that was a, a super, was fun, super one. fun one. Uh, yeah, to, that's to true. Do, to do, um, I had a lot of fun doing week. this as well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah, it was, it good, was, fun. It was good fun. And this week, this week, we had we had. Or actually, last or actually last week now, week now uh, we, uh, had the, we had the, 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 fun, the, the of fun of exploring Central, uh, Central Park, Park in New York City, where we, where we uh, uh, were looking for, looking for the shortest paths, shortest paths for, uh, for uh, you know, you know Point of interest, point of interest interesting, interesting sites, sites uh, where, they uh, located, where they are located, how to get there, how to get from, to get from point, point A to B, and how to find, how to way find your way around the, the, um, these, um, these um, yeah, spatial, yeah, spatial uh, uh, challenges, challenges in New York City. And lots, and of, fun lots of fun and opportunities to learn exactly, to learn exactly. So that exactly. was really so that the goal, and I think that was achieved. Think that was achieved. Uh, and I hope, uh, and I hope you all had fun and, and you all had a good time doing these challenges. Doing these challenges. Um, I, uh, I uh, looking at the, looking at the, 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 the names, the names took part, took part. I see a couple of, a couple of um, diehards uh, die who really took really part, took part from, from the beginning, the beginning with the barbecue with the challenge, the challenge was last, very one last one here this week. This week. So, uh, so uh, I think we had a couple, of, we had fans. A couple of fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's uh, good. I, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it, and we hope you like this one as well. As well. Um, um, where we had, where we had uh, uh, the, uh, the Central Park, uh, Central Park challenge. challenge. So so explore the explore area, the area was, was basically the goal, and, the, goal uh, and, uh, the task, the of, task this of, week. of this week. All right, All right. so, so beginner's, challenge. beginner's challenge, solution time. Solution time. Um, um, we asked, we you, asked for these, you for these, uh, these few, uh, few questions, uh, questions uh, on, the uh, on the data set. You should name, you should uh, name a clock, a clock um, um, where, where we, where where we started, where with, started our with our challenge. Uh, you, should uh, you should tell us the, the, the name of the, the, name of the point, of interest, point of interest, um, um, how far is, how far is, 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 is away from, away from crow flies, crow flies and what is the actual distance if you would walk the paths in Central Park. 
and um, and um, then a then name, a of, name the of the cafe closes, closes to a bike hiring place. place. So that was so that, that was, was that was what I wanted to do. Um, so, um, let me, so let me uh, jump, uh, jump into, into uh, sandbox. Uh, sandbox so we so can, we can um, um, get uh, get this uh, going. This going. So again, so maybe again, quickly, maybe quickly uh, just to uh, remind you, uh, you uh, there's, uh, there's a medium post. Medium post so um, um, let me quickly, let me quickly uh, post, uh, post the, the, the information. The information. In, uh, in, the uh, in the chat here, so here you can so see everything, can see everything for summer of notes. But again, week, this is the week, the, the, the week, uh, last, week's last week's post, uh, and there's uh, a link, special link, link for a sandbox to to, to open with the open with the open map data, map data, and then once you click that link, you come here, you can open your open your browser, and browser, and you come into here to go for the browser, the browser. And also, and this also is this very handy is very because, handy because this also gives you all the information you need to solve these challenges, challenges and all other challenges. So it's a very, it's a very good starting point here. We have in this, this, browser, in this guide. browser guide. So our first so challenge. Our first yeah, challenge by the way, um, yeah. Um, yeah. something. Uh, if you really enjoy these challenges uh, and you know someone who would also do this, then of course you can also give them the challenges to do them later, right? So it's for sure. Not for sure. They will stay up online. Exactly. Yeah. Forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's let's, let's get going. Let's get so going. Our, so our our quest our quest was, was uh, find the point, find the point, find this clock. Find this clock. So we look so for, we a, point look for a point of interest and we look and we for, look for a, clock a clock type. type. Uh, so with the type, so with the type is, is clock. Clock. Uh, return. Uh, return. P. So this is what, so we, this want is what we want to do. Uh, there is only, uh, there one, is only one clock, so, so the answer to the, answer first, to the first question was, question this, one was here. this one here. It's, it's um, the, the De La Corte musical clock. clock. So this, so this is, the first, the, first, the, first, um, the first node where, the first node where, start where we start our quest, our quest uh, in Central Park. Uh, in Central Park. Uh, next quest, uh, next quest uh, was to uh, was find a point of interest that is 100 meters, uh, meters uh, apart from, 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 this, from, this this clock, from this clock in a straight line. A straight so, line. What so what we need to do is, obviously, now that we know where we, know where we start, where we, start. We, had a, we have yeah, a point, we have one, point, point, one, of point of interest, um, and, um, we and we have uh, a name, a of, name that. of that, and that is the De La Corte musical clock. And so this is where we start. And, um, and um, from there we, from there we define, we define a point, a point two, two uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, we don't know we yet. Don't so know we need yet. to find, so need to find uh, what that, point, uh, what two that point two is. But what we know, what is, we know that is that point, point one, one mustn't be, must be point two, point so they don't, two, have, so to they don't have to be the same, obviously. The same, obviously so, so we need another point of interest, so otherwise we get the Della Corte clock again. And now we and need to, to, to calculate the distance. distance. So we use the so distance, use the distance function, function, and we have, and the, we have the, the location, the location values, values in, in um, um, as properties as properties for the Delacorte Delacorte Music Club, Music Club uh, clock, uh, clock saved. saved. And we use the and second, use the second uh, location. Uh, location also here. Also here. Um, um, in distance, in distance, and we define and we that define the distance that must be, must be uh, bigger, than uh, bigger than 100. And then we, and want, then to we want to know what is, what is the name the of, name of this, this second, second point of interest, point of interest here. here. Do this. Do this. We get no, we get no results, because results because I probably, because I probably wrote, wrote, wrote the like clock, 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 clock wrong. Clock wrong. There's no, a missing right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Del 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 okay. Okay. Delete that. Delete that. Here we go. Here All we right. Go. So we All get the right. name so of the second point of interest. Zoo school. Zoo school. So, 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 now, so now we know Zoo school, school is the second point of interest we have, interest we have and that is less than 100 meters, meters away from the, away from the musical, clock. musical clock. Um, um, now we want now to, we want to get to the actual distance, actual distance um, between, between uh, bet oh no, actually, oh, no, actually now we want to calculate the straight line, sorry. So from the straight line, we have now the point of interest. Maybe I can start. Maybe I can start. start, 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 start type as much. Um, um, we have we have the Delacorte musical, Delacorte musical, musical clock, again, uh, clock again, and we have, and we have the, the zoo, school. zoo school. So we have so these we have two, these two as, our as our two point, two of, point interest. of interest. And now, and now uh, what we want uh, to have is the distance, distance value, value again, again. But now we want to now calculate, we want to the, calculate distance the distance between uh, the, two, uh, the, two, the um, um, location, location one and, uh, and location, uh, location two. two. So we get so these we two get location, these two location values, again. values again, um, um, and, uh, and return uh, return this as, as, as let's call it travel, travel distance, maybe. distance maybe. So we get a, so we get a, a nice name for that. Uh, let's calculate, uh, let's calculate that, that okay, and we see, okay, it's 21.49 meters apart, uh, as, as, as the crow flies. Hmm? Hmm? 
really close. It's very close. It's very close. Yeah. Yes. But actually, but actually, if you if, if you, you wanna, if you wanna, you wanna walk, you wanna walk from, uh, from uh, the, 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 the music the clock, music to, the clock school, to the zoo school, you cannot you go cannot across, go the, across field. the field. You have, you have to go on the pathways that the pathways that the pathways gives you. So we need to see how far that is if we wanna walk. Actually, actually, not fly because fly because I cannot fly and you probably cannot either. So for that, we again take these two these two point of interest. The clock, the and, clock the, and the, the zoo school. The zoo school. But, now, but now we uh, add, we add um, a pathway path path to it. So let's, so let's add a p, add a p is, is equal to shortest, shortest path. path. And from and that we go from, go from p1, p1 to, to uh, any, uh, any, any any connection, any, connection, any relationship, any relationship um, um, to p2, to p2 uh, our two, uh, our two uh, points, of uh, points of interest here. here. And we don't really and we don't care, really care um, what the relationship what the between these two, two points are. If you remember, if you remember our, our data model, data was, model very, was very, uh, very easy very in that, easy that, that case. case. So every so every connection is basically a root relationship. relationship in a, in a, a more advanced data set, it could be that you have different kinds of relationships between these these, uh, these, uh, air, these, air, nodes, these nodes and this and asterisk, this asterisk just, basically just basically tells you go for whatever, go for whatever, there, whatever is. there is. So let's see what kind of path we get if we, we, if we, if look, we at look, at look at that. So here we go. Expand that a little expand bit. So here we, see. So here we, see. we start at school, school or we start at the clock meta and then we walk the routes across these intersections and we go to the Delacorte musical clock. And if you click on one relationship, you see the distance between these two intersections. The root distance tells you what the actual distance is. So what we could do now is basically click these Roots, click these roots and then we can collect, collect, uh, collect, uh, collect the distance collect values distance and then values calculate, and then calculate it, in a, it up in a, a calculator. A calculator. I mean, you could do that. Do that. Would, you, would you want to do that? Do that? No, probably not because we not can because calculate, we can that, calculate that, out of, that out of Neo4j, out of Neo4j so, so we don't have to do that. In order to do so, we need to collect all these root relationships. And for that, we need to collect them with the relationships. Uh, function. Uh, function. So that so collects, that collects all, the all the relationships in the, in the shortest path, shortest path which we now have, we now down, have here. down here. And we, and we, we call, we them, call as them as roots. Collect them as collect roots. Them as roots. And, um, and, um, Unwind, unwind them so that, them, that, so that, we, have that we have all of them separated, of them separated but not connected. Not connected. Uh, uh, unwind root, unwind root. root. Uh, and then uh, we return, then we return um, um, the um, uh, the root, the root distance. distance. So for that, for that we should ask get, get a list. Get a list. Yes. Yes. So, here see, so here you see we have a list, have of, a the list roots, of the roots uh, between, uh, these, between intersections. these intersections. So again, so again now we have to very easily, we can also go into our calculator, 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 calculator but, but, but as an easier way, if there's an easier way, go for the easier way. We go for the root in a sum. In a sum. So that's so that's uh, uh, very easy very to do. Easy so, to we do so we just basically add, add some function, some around, function around the, the uh, root distances, uh, distances and, execute, and again. execute again. And then here we go. Here we go. Two hundred and twelve point one nine is the is actual the distance. Actual distance uh, if you would, uh, if walk you would walk from the clock from the to, clock the to the school on, school on official, pathways. official pathways. So that's so ten that's times as much. That's exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Nice. Exactly. Exactly. And, and um, um, yes, that, yes, that was, that was the, the second, the second um, part of the part challenge, of the for, the challenge for the beginners this week. And, and the, the final the part, part of the, of the, of the challenge, was, challenge to, was to to get, uh, get to a cafe that was close to a bike rental place. Um, um, so for that, so we, for that we, we would need to we look need to again look into again our points of interest because uh, what we need, uh, to, what know we need to know is, what, is kind of, what kind of what kind of types there are, what kind of what kind of kind of types we have in our data set. Because I don't know from from, 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 from by, by, by heart by heart what, 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 kind, what, what of kind of different labels these, labels these, uh, these different uh, uh, points of interest point have. So, have. so I'll get I'll a list get a list of of this thing this thing um, um, types here. And, um, and um, let, me let me order them, order by, them by p dot type, type 
in uh, ascending, ascending so now, so now we should get a list, get a list of all of the types of the system so here system, so bar, bar baseball, baseball basketball but what we look is for bicycle rental not bicycle parking you see could be confused bicycle rental is one type and here and cafe, here is, cafe another is another type, there are more, you see more, castle, you see castle, chess, 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 game. chess game, croquet where croquet you can play, a fountain as well might as well, we'll go into we'll later, go into on. later on. on, ice skating ice rig, skating land memorial monument, so there are many, but what we're looking for is the bicycle rental and the cafe. And for and that, for that uh, now, uh, we, now we 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 see what what two types are closest to each other. And for that, and we, for go that we go again into again our, into our um, um, P1s and P2s, and P2s, and P2s point, of interest. point of interest. So here we go, so here we go for a, for a um, um, type. Type. It needs to be cafe. To be cafe. So, we so we have our uh, point, of uh, point of interest one. Is a, one is needs a, to be a cafe. Be cafe. And, our and our point of interest point two, of interest two um, uh, type, type needs to be a. Bicycle, bicycle rental. rental. So now we have so now we to find, have to find kind of two, kind different, two different uh, uh, modes we want. Modes we want. And, and um, for that, for that uh, we have, uh, we have um, uh, these two defined, these defined here. here. And now what we do now is we, do is we uh, define, uh, a few define a few things. things. So, so we have we our have first point of first interest, point of interest uh, as, a, as, as, a cafe. as a cafe. And, and um, um, our second our point of interest as Bike. Bike. So now we have these so two. Now we have these two. And, and distance. Distance. Uh, calculate, uh, calculate again from, again from P1, P1 location, location and P2, and P2 location. location. So so these, these, two, these two um, um point, of point, point of interest location. location. As it's called. As it's called. Um, um, and then what we and want, then want to we see want is, to see is we want to know, want to know cafe, cafe name. name uh, um, Bike, bike name, so the, name, so the name of the cafe and the name of the bike rental place, place as, well as, as well as distance, distance and we're going to order, order this by distance. By distance. Ascending, so now we should see uh, uh, nothing. Order by. Oh, order by. Oh, order by. Um, um, is there nothing? What did I want to buy? Was it bicycle or two? Bicycle. Maybe I have to type it in. Cafe. Maybe I should call it distance. Just in case. So, it should be okay. You had one distance that you did not place. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we Perfect. go. Now it works. Okay. Now it works. Okay. okay. I know what that was. So we see now we, we see the distance, we see the distance, of, these distance of these two um, uh, locations. So, location. so the closest the one is the one city is bike NYC bike, bike rental place, place to the Petri, to the Petri Court, Court Cafe, Cafe, which is 275.64 meters apart. And this is, and this is again, distance again, just doesn't, distance doesn't care, care for the care route, for the so, route. We, so we could go, we could go uh, and, and look for uh, how, how how would you how walk, because walk obviously, because again, this would again, this probably suggest, suggest going, going across, across fields, field. uh, uh, yeah, which, yeah, which is maybe not maybe allowed. allowed. So, so um, um, if we want if to go for a path, we can add a shortest path again, which is again P1. Anything, anything with uh, P2. P2. So now we have, so these, now we have uh, these, uh, these two, these two things. things. We keep our we keep cafe, our we, keep our things. we remove, remove the distance because we don't want that anymore. What we want, what though, we want is, though is, um, we need to, we need to um, uh, need to, uh, need to calculate, to the, calculate relationships the relationships again, again um, um, as, as roots. Um, um, and unwind, and unwind root as root. root. So we get so there, we get and then there, we get the return, return, the cafe name, cafe the, name bike the bike rental place, rent place again, place again. Um, um, and, and the, the sum of sum of the, of the root, root distance. distance. Yeah. 
and we order, and we by, order by this this sum. sum. Uh, uh, yeah, because I didn't, yeah, because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give it a name. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't give it a name. So I edit so again. again. Uh, ascending uh, Sonobi. You should see that. Should see that. Go. Go. So, so actually, actually it's, not it's not too far, so, but the so dancing but the crane, dancing cafe, crane cafe, cafe walking to walking city to bike central, central park station, park station. Uh, is, uh, is, uh, is closer, to, is walk. closer to walk. It's, uh, it's 397.48 uh, uh, meters, meters apart. Where well, you see again where the Petri Cut Cafe is here, so 449, so 50 meters apart. So there is not much difference in terms of walking distance, but a little bit. So if you want to start somewhere, walk at this cafe here and then go to bike around the station. And that was the easy challenge. Super. Well done, Alex. Mm. I'm always super impressed how you, of your command of Neo it's, it's really, really, really cool. To see that it's also for people that don't have like an coding software development background can grasp Neo and, and, you know, use the data in a, in a graph to make sense of it. That's always yeah. very yeah. warm hardening uh, <laughs> to, to me to see. Yeah, no, I think yeah, it's, no, I it's think absolutely, it's, it's, absolutely, it's, uh, it's, um, it's um, you, you can start you with can it start if, if, if you don't have, you a, don't proper have a proper uh, IT background, IT background because, because the, the language, is, language is, is, so is so visible that you, that you, that you can follow you can it and follow understand it, understand it. Uh, yeah. at least uh, in a, in a, in in a, a basic a, level. A basic and I don't, level. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't claim, don't claim being, uh, being, uh, being pro being here by far. But at least I know I can read what's going on and I can understand that is fairly easy to do from the beginning, from a beginning perspective. So yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Shall so we, it's good. So we yeah, bef bef before I go into the uh, advanced challenge, I want to show two things uh, based on your examples that uh, we need to introduce anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah. perhaps switch you can switch to, to my screen, screen and then we yeah. can talk about the advanced challenge a little bit later. <laughs> so what uh, Alex just showed us was the two points of interest here with the shortest path distance, right? So we have bicycle rental and uh, cafe, and we had the path, which is the shortest path between the two, oops. Shortest path between P1 um, route to P2, uh, and then we could return the paths here, or we could return p1.name, uh, p2.name. Um, then let's start with the length of the path. Um, so that's kind of, oops, bicycle, rental, cafe, or oh, it's type cafe. It's type, yeah. Right, so we see these. Uh, so this is kind of the length of the path. What I want to show you, um, as a uh, neat trick where you don't need to do the unwind, but you can also do this inline. Um, so you, there's uh, something called a list comprehension where, where you can just go over all relationships are in threads of paths, and then just grab the distance inline here, which gives you a list of distances. Um, so you should see this, oops, distance. Uh, so we see the kind of this list of distances here, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a uh, function in Epoch which can actually compute the sum of uh, of a list of numbers. Uh, so Epoch calls sum um, uh, of this list of distances. So that's kind of uh, giving us the uh -huh. distance of these shortest paths mm -hmm. as such. Um, but uh, what you can also do is there's also an uh, actually a routing uh, algorithm in, in Epoch, which does this out of the box for us. It's called Dijkstra, so the Dijkstra algorithm. So if you Google for that, that's a shortest path algorithm. Um, that uh, gives us the shortest path between nodes in a graph based on a weight on a relationship, right? Exactly what we want here in our, in our graph. And it does this by uh, subsequently computing ever longer paths and then picking up the shortest one from the list so far and then kind of until it reaches the end uh, of that. And in EVJ, we have it even as a bidirectional algorithm. So it goes from both, starts from both sides until it finds an overlap and then 
con um, constricts this path even further. So that's uh, that's really cool. And so that's in Neo4j in the Java API, but with APOC, uh, we can actually access this um, as, as an algorithm. So we say we want to have the distance between P1 and P2 on the route uh, relationship and on the distance value of the of the um, relationship. And then we just return the path and the weight, which is the kind of the distance. And then we can just return this, basically. So we just have our uh, path. Oops. It's a bit tricky. It always reacts too easily. Um, and uh, so we return the path. Or let's return the distance first. Uh, so you see basically what Alex had here. I hope, oh, I didn't sort it uh, yet. Uh, order by distance ascending. And hopefully, this should give us the same. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like the same ones. Um, only that I've switched uh, P1 I think and that's, P2. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, the difference that's, here with the, the algorithms you, you use. I think the Lepard Yeah, just yeah, is, switch is, P1 and P2. So basically, it's kind of the, the other way. No, no, I meant so, uh, the distance is. I mean, what, what I got what is I got the, the Pierre Corps Cafe was, was, was closer with the shortest path algorithm. Path algorithm. Uh, and the Dijkstra, Dijkstra gives you the Lepard which is a little different. Yeah, the walking distance. Exactly. So that's quite quite nice, which is also something we need now for the. For the fountains, and uh, actually, what's quite nice about these paths is that this, this is actually something that we can visualize in the browser, of course. So we can just show the paths here. Um, or we should probably only return. Now we get lots of paths. <laughs> yeah, these were too many paths. I think. Let's see. Um, uh, <laughs> let Let me limit this to one. Um, so limit one. So just just that we see what such a path looks like in a. Oops. Yeah, you wrote, the, wrote limit, uh, the limit in, in, in the type of the cafe. Type of the cafe point of interest too. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, cool. So here we have one path, kind of yeah. starting at the cafe, then going over all our routing nodes and ending up at the uh, like uh, rental. Right, so these are all the in-between nodes from the OpenStreetMap uh, routing as, as such. And um, Lou mentioned last time that we have this really nice NeoMap application from Estelle uh, that you can connect through neo desktop. So I basically just took my neo desktop, added a an, um, remote connection to, uh, to my sandbox database with the URL and the username and password. And then, because I have NeoMap here installed as a graph app in Neo4j Desktop, I can just start it on my active graph, and then I get this really nice application here. Um, so what I can do here is, for instance, I can say I want to see all points of interest, uh, render their location, and uh, use the type as the, um, as the name. So if I do this and say update map, then I see all these uh, points of interest here. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but if I want to, I can also say I actually want to um, use an advanced layer here. And an advanced layer allows me to put in an, um, a Cypher query as well. So I can just steal my Cypher query from here for your browser here that we just had. And then in NeoMap, add this here on top. And then just say, instead of return path, I just do uh, unwind nodes of path as n. So each node of our path gets an n, and then we return location, uh, latitude, longitude, and uh, the type as tooltip. And if I run this as polyline, then it should actually render, let's see if this works. Oh. Oh, I didn't do the limit, right? So I should probably do the limit here. That's all the paths. That's all the paths, yeah. That's all the paths between all the cafes, right? So, uh, oh, yeah, uh, with path limit one. And then I have here my little path between the two. 
Right? And you yeah. can also see yeah. that there's no direct way because there's a, no, there's a, a little lake. <laughs> or yeah, that would be difficult. Different. It's, it's, it's right. like so a yeah, child zone so if you want to go from the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so you can also use a uh, near map to render a path, which is actually quite, quite cool. As such. It's super cool because now you see actually where it's going because I mean, obviously I'm not from New York, so I don't know where the, yeah. where the, where the city bike stop in the, 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 the cafe is. So I don't, I don't know exactly. where these are, but when looking at the map, you, you clearly see, yeah. oh, you there can they see them. Yeah. Exactly. So you see CDs, right? Which is really nice. And if you wanted to do more, then we can also do limit five, and then it would show us multiple parts from different cafes and different bike rentals and, and hmm. things like that, right? Which is really nice. Super good. Okay, but our advanced challenge is actually about fountains, which is really fitting for the. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So maybe let's let, let me quickly go to the. I have it open here as well. You have it open, so as, yeah. well. open as well. Yeah. So the experience challenge is f find uh, the total f uh, distance to visit all the fountains in the most efficient way. So it's kind of the traveling salesman problem, <laughs> and. Um, we want to kind of go uh, into this like step by step and then see how we can solve this. So this is one solution. Um, if you want to, you can also, of course, implement a proper traveling salesman solution, but this is kind of an approximation to this. Um, so, okay. If we look at this, we can uh, start by finding all the fountains. Uh, so we find all points of interest where uh, type fountain the turn p so we have i think nine or so fountains right so here are yeah. nine nodes some of them have also just fountain as a name so that's kind of not so nice to to look at them we can also look at them here um i can just say i have a layer that uh, gives me uh, a point type uh, point of interest, location, and uh, these are all the points of interest here. You still have the on. Uh, all the points of interest. Yeah. But then we can say, if we go to advanced cipher query, we can say and and dot type equals fountain, so that we just get a visual representation of these fountains. And so we have a fountain here, a bunch of fountains here, and there uh, are some more up here. As well, right? So these are kind of the uh, routes. And let's see if in the end we see kind of the optimal path through all these fountains. Um, I'm quite interested in that as well. So what we can do is basically start by um, looking at uh, each of these fountains, of course, has like a fountain that is closest uh, to it. And what would be nice is kind of to get the first, the pairwise distances between between these fountains, right? So we would say, okay, uh, let's get all these fountains and then let's compute the pairwise distances. So there are several options of doing this. So one is I could just take two fountains like this, uh, P1 and P2 again, like we just had with Alex's example mm -hmm. and uh, say um, where uh, P1 is not the same as P2. And then we just compute uh, the distance. Uh, this time we use uh, Dijkstra directly, uh, call APOC uh, algo Dijkstra uh, P1, P2, uh, our route and uh, distance, uh, yield weight as distance or as uh, dist. And then we just return uh, P1.name, P2.name comma this, so we get pairs of uh, fountains and their distance, basically, right? So, right, so these are all the uh, fountains and, uh, and their distances, uh, pairwise. And what we can now do is basically turn this into a, an additional relationship in our graph. So we would have, like, between each of these fountains, we create an uh, additional relationship uh, for their distance. And uh, Lou did this with epoch periodic uh, commit, which basically says uh, execute the statement uh, as often as you uh, have uh, a result uh, in here. So 
basically uh, using this code here. I'll just explain it in a second. So, um, so we just have our code that we just saw, like two, two points of interest that don't have a shortest path connection between them yet, right? And then uh, it can, kind of takes each of those and uh, limits them to one with the limit one here. So this query is executed as uh, often as it returns something. And then it calls um, uh, the Dijkstra that you just uh, saw here. We get the weight, and then it creates a shortest path uh, between, the two, uh, between the two nodes. And um, then uh, returns how many paths it created, and it should be always one until at the end there are no, none left. So at the end, it returns zero if they're all uh, shortest paths created. And so if you run this query, it will create now a new relationship, 36 uh, relationships. And now we have a new relationship here called shortest path. And if you click on that, we see all our fountains uh, connected to each other uh, as with these shortest path um, pairwise operations. So each fountain cell has basically links to all their um, neighbors, more or less, with their distance. So and on the shortest path, we see also the, see the distance value uh, as well. Right. So that's step number one. Um, so that's kind of a new graph that we create on top of our existing graph. And then uh, we can basically um, look at them um, as, a, as a list. So we just look at the IDs of these nodes and the distance. And uh, so Lucid um, basically let's pick one that occurs quite frequently and we see 3490 occurs quite frequently in our list. So we just use this as a starting point. And then what uh, the idea was here is to use uh, the minimum spanning tree algorithm, which is basically an algorithm that gives you for a graph uh, the minimum uh, number of relationships uh, that have the short or the smallest weight in this graph, right? So we have this graph of, of shortest paths between fountains, and we want to get the, uh, the graph with one starting point um, that gives us the shortest kind of pass based on these distances on, on that. And that's kind of the minimum spanning tree uh, algorithm. And fortunately, in our uh, graph algorithm library, we have um, this algorithm, minimum spanning tree. And we can use that uh, for this. So let's have a look. I posted the link, posted to, the, the link to the chat, chat to, the, to our graph to data, our data science data page. Science page. Thank you. So basically what this does is this takes our node with the ID 3490 that we saw before and then calls the minimum spanning tree uh, algorithm with uh, the points of interest nodes, which have a shortest path uh, relationship uh, on the distance property. We say we don't care about the direction of this uh, relationship because distance from A to B is the same as distance from B to A. Uh, our start node is our start node with the ID 3490. And we take the, um, on the projected graph, we take the distance again, and we want to write to the MST relationship. So minimum spanning tree, basically MST relationship. So we could also call this fountains if you wanted to, right? So then uh, uh, this would also, also work. And we also write the distance on, on, on this new relationship. So, and if I run this, uh, it basically computes one path. And now we have a fountains relationship here. And if I click on this, we should see one path through all our fountains, basically um, getting along these. Right? And so we can actually look at the uh, query in, in meal map. So we can take this and uh, just this is path unwind nodes of path and that's n and this should be our Let's see. 
update map. Mm, this doesn't look so nice. Mine. So to be honest, I haven't tried a new map thing before. So that's something I, which could be just a polyline. It's not kind of correctly uh, rendering because it takes all the nodes and shows the uh, relationships between those. Um, so that's probably something we need to investigate. But what we can do here as well is kind of to look at the total distance of the path. So we can just say um, return uh, relationships from of P uh, and get the distance of these. Uh, so we can do apoc pull sum of R in relationships of P and just get order distance. And that's just, and we should see, well, oh, this is the whole path, right? So we actually wanted to have, there are many small paths basically, but what we actually wanted to have is uh, our starting point, which is the, this ID. Yeah, one yeah, and it's then- going back and forth between the, mm, yeah. Right, and this is basically P9, where ID of P1 is 3490. Oops. Um, so let's see. And this should be one path. And that gives us this kind of distance, right? So let's see. And this might be just not. Do you need brackets or brackets or off? No, probably not. ID. Oops. IDP on. We wanted that it's eight long only. Yeah. So this is kind of our our single pass now that has all these relationships in there. Um, and uh, what I wanted to see is, uh, so either we use Alex's approach with, um, but we now have a single path, you can just say unwind felts of P, it's R, and then uh, it's R. This touchpad is really super annoying. Uh, return sum of R dot distance. So this would be our total length path, which is unwind so which is 5k so it's a nice 5k run that you can walk from all the fountains <laughs> you get fit <laughs> And uh, so, and while you're running, you can basically refresh yourself uh, all the <laughs> yeah. time. Get a, and get now a I would like to try this again with NeoMap and see if this time it actually renders our path correctly. So if I just, uh, instead of doing all the small paths, I do just one single path here. Um, it should give us hopefully uh, update map. Yeah. See, so now we see this is our path along from the lower left corner of the Central Park along all the fountains. And then here are the three fountains on top, uh, which are then also connected basically. Right. Super. So which gives us this. Um, of course, there are other ways of doing this. There's like a full traveling salesman algorithm, which basically is an uh, uh, optimization problem, which uh, you have to watch out uh, that it doesn't go into local minima and it can't basically walks around like all the combinations and um, tries to accommodate uh, getting shorter. I had also uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, which is the um, thing that alluded with the P1, P2. It's also something that you can do with uh, APOC call combinations, um, which is also quite handy to know. Um, so which is basically um, give it a collection of things. And then you say, I want to have combinations of this collection. So for instance, if I just return here, uh, the pair, you will see that we have um, 
next one. In our result, we get like pairs of, um, well, let's return, perhaps, perhaps it's easier to see if we um, get the two elements of the pair and then return uh, start dot name and dot name. So you see basically from all these nine nodes uh, in our collection, we get like pairs between them as um, uh, from the uh, from the from the function, and then we can do the same basically uh, using the extra um, or shortest path uh, to find the, the distance between them. And then, for instance, there's also a nice trick if you have an aggregation with uh, uh, with uh, grouping keys. Then you can actually say, okay, I want to sort the stream of data, and then when I do uh, after the uh, ordering in the in the query, uh, if you do and collect, it keeps the order. So the smallest value is at the top of the list. So if you pick the first element of this list, you get the shortest distance uh, path, for instance here. So that's kind of this gives you start end, and the shortest path between uh, start and end uh, of all uh, possible uh, paths. So, which is also a nice trick to uh, if you have to do an aggregation and you want to only get like the minimum value of an aggregation, then that's uh, ordering and doing collect, and then the head is quite a nice uh, way of doing that as well. I had a different approach of uh, Tulu uh, where I only did for each fountain the closest fountain, um, but that didn't work out as well. So I tried to do this, uh, but uh, it didn't give me the a nice spanning tree that Blue had, but it had more like an uh, back and forth. So you had to go back and <laughs> forth between the different fountains. So that was not uh, as good as a loose solution. So that's you, why you, I you did the, 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 the full marathon. marathon. Yeah, exactly. So it's really <laughs> like it was had certain, uh, it went from A to B to C, but then in between it always had these kind of side spikes that mm. where you had to go to another fountain and then go back to the main route, basically. Oh, um, okay. So I have to figure out why that was not so uh, not so good. Um, yeah, so that's uh, this. I, I think we also saw them in uh, in Neomap, which is really nice. Uh, so that's, that's really good, nice yeah. tool for visualizing things like that. And here you see even in, like the little blue things that are like the fountain bits and pieces. That's really really cool to do. And if you want to do something similar um, for um, for other types of, uh, of um, points of interest, of course, you can also do that with rocks or statues or monuments or other, other things as well. Or cafes. Yeah. You go from one cafe to the next cafe or something. <laughs> that would also work. Yeah, and if you want to know more about these algorithms, you can look in Wikipedia, but we can also look in the, uh, uh, if you just Google for APOC and Dijkstra, you should uh, find the uh, um, APOC docs for, um, for these things with examples. And uh, also for if you do minimum minimum spanning tree Neo4j, you should also find the graph data science, uh, this one. Uh, minimum weight spanning tree, which also explains a little bit about the history of the uh, algorithm and where to use it, uh, what do you need for requirements, and then has a bunch of usage examples as well. And there's a ton of other pathfinding algorithms as well. So if you want to do more, uh, there's much more. There's also all shortest paths, A star, Yen, K shortest paths, and, and, and so on. So there's much more in there. By the way, a really nice pathfinding algorithm is also A star, which also exists as an APOC procedure, which additionally, uh, if you have a really complex network of, of routes, not as small as the Central Park, then A star helps you because Basically, it angles the, the tip of the path that it looks for always to the closest geographic distance. So it kind of always angles towards the target node, uh, what's the closest geographic distance to the target node. So it kind of has this uh, ability to go towards where you want to go, uh, while Dijkstra initially can go off the route completely depending on the, what it, the distances and then come back only later, for instance, right? So. Um, and then Dexter is using it uh, based on the shortest path that it found, and then it kind of looks at other paths and finds the shortest. So uh, ASTAR can be more efficient uh, for things like that. So um, I think we could actually use here directly a star in the, in the example that I had at the beginning. Uh, 
this the fountain one? So if I look at the uh, bike rental one, uh, I think if you just it, it's, uh, exchange uh, Dexter for, for its star, its star, it should actually already work. Uh, no, we need more. So that's also, oh, latitude and longitude. So we have also, uh, it's called latitude and longitude in our case, right? Uh, do you need both of them or just one? Or just one? Location, no, you need both because it uses the geo. Um, yeah, then yeah, I think they're both, they're, they're both as, they should be there as properties. Latitude, I'm just looking up. If it's lat and long, yeah. Okay, we just say uh, lat. Yeah. yeah. And long, and then uh, weight property name is this, and let and long. So let's see what happens here. Yeah. So we get also uh, here our pass back that we had. Super. Uh, Super cool. It's just a more optimal algorithm if you have a more complex and large network, basically. Uh, so A star uh, then uses basically also the geo distance to direct the, the tip of the search, basically, as such. Cool. Cool. Great. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much, thank Michael. Very much, Michael. Um, um, I, think that, I think that, that concludes, that concludes uh, our, uh, summer, our of notes, summer of notes. Um, um, Solutions, solutions for week four, four also week four, conclude also summer of notes summer of for, notes 2020. for 2020. Um, again, yeah, again, it's really you know, sad, but this um, is, yeah. summer is coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, the more we can kind of recommend to you to join notes 2020, which is uh, perhaps uh, Alexi can pull it up, uh, which is our online developer conference in October on October 20th. And so some of notes was kind of going towards that um, preparing uh, a little bit. So, um, if you um, if you're interested in a lot of really cool um, developer content around NeoJ and graphs, please sign up to uh, Notes 2020, uh, which is on October 20th. It's 201020, depending where you are. For the Americans, it's 10, 20, 20, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, yep, exactly. So uh, please register for Notes 2020 to have an amazing experience. Some of the speakers are already listed. The talks are coming really soon. And uh, it will be really an amazing. And tell your friends and family and grandma and everyone. <laughs> tell everybody. Tell everybody. Notes 2020, right? Um, Let me post a link. Into... Yeah, you already yeah, did. You okay, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. So with that, so with that we, we finished. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much everybody, everybody again for submitting, again for submitting, your, submitting your, your, uh, your, your, solutions your solutions to our challenges. Our thank, challenges. You, thank, thank you for having, for having um, uh, you know, being a part of this and having fun, obviously, during these past past weeks. Yeah, and we'll contact the winners about the prizes and exactly. I I already got the stickers as well. You should have you should have received an email and uh, stickers and the goodie bags will be sent out uh, later this week or early next week. So I think you should you should receive your your prizes uh, soon, uh, depending on how, how quickly they they get over um, to you. Um, other than that, again, we hope to see you again in a, in a stream near you again uh, next next time. I think. Yep. Uh, look at looking at the schedule. Adam is tomorrow, right? Is Adam tomorrow, right? Um, and I'm coming on Wednesday. And you're back on I'm Wednesday, back on exactly. exactly. So um, uh, that is what, that what is you can what expect you next. Can um, next. Um, and uh, I hope you all had fun. And talk to you soon. See you soon again. Yeah. Bye. Lots of fun. Bye bye.